What's up everyone, my name is Corey James. Welcome to Mind Apparent and today I want to explore three ancient sites that to this day have unanswered questions, mysteries as to how and why they were constructed and the evidence that we do have suggests a higher form of technology could be the answer to these questions. So let's not waste another minute, let's dive into this mystery and let's get to it. They are not men like Kaspaku. Then what are they? Some say they came from the stars. Others believe that they, they flew across the great water when their land sank into the sea. Now Gobekli Tepe makes our list not necessarily because of the construction and what they were able to do which is beyond impressive in itself, it's more for the time period that this site was said to be constructed. Located in the southeastern region of Anatolia in modern day Turkey, this site dates back to 10,000 BC. Now, it was originally discovered back in 1963 by Istanbul University and the University of Chicago. However, they only noticed the upper portion of these T-shaped pillars and mistook them for Byzantine grave sites and of little significance, so it was overlooked. It wasn't until 1994 when Klaus Schmidt of the German Archaeological Institute dug a little bit deeper, did a little bit more research, and went to the site himself and then actually literally dug a little bit deeper and he began to unearth these massive t-shaped pillars that had a weight of 7 to 20 metric tons and a height of about 20 feet encompassed within a 10 to 30 meter diameter circle this was an amazing discovery however it was just the tip of the iceberg geological scans of the entirety of this site revealed that there were 20 circles with more than 200 pillars buried beneath hundreds of feet of sand and to date only four of those mounds have been unearthed leaving 16 to go this predates everything by more than six thousand years a time they called the pre-pottery age we're not even supposed to be making pottery yet we're building a massive site like gobekli tepe you have to ask yourself how the hell did they do it Moving on to number two, Puma Punku. Now, this site makes our list because of the overwhelming and abundant evidence of what seems to be obvious machining. Located at the ancient Tiwanaku site in western Bolivia, Puma Punku or Door of the Puma was said to be constructed around 536 AD. Considered to be the center of where the world was created by the ancient Incan civilization, they claimed they did not build Puma Punku. In fact, it was their ancestors. However, to this day, we have no explanation as to who actually built this site, how it was built, what it was built for, and what happened to it. These are massive, massive stones, some of them weighing up to 10, 20, 30 tons with the heaviest one actually weighing 131 tons. That's 289,000 freaking pounds. How are you moving something like that 2,000 years ago? Yes, the quarry was only 10 miles away. However, the only way to get there is to go up and down this steep incline. Pumapunku sat two miles above sea level, so there's no trees, there's no logs, and there was no evidence of the wheel or the pulley system. So to this day, scientists have no idea how they were able to transport these massive blocks, let alone cut them the way they did. How the hell do you do something like this? How do you cut something this precise, this intricate into stone? 2,000 years ago. In order for us to do this today, we use diamond-tipped buzz saws. We use extreme technology, CNC machines, computer-guided machines. Like, how are they doing this 2,000 years ago? It just doesn't make sense, especially when you look at the precision. Look at some of these holes. They look like drill holes, bore holes. Like, you can't do this with copper and, you know, bronze. You just can't. But this is just my opinion, just my thoughts. I want to know what you guys think. Leave some comments below and let me know what you think about the ancient site of Puma Punku.
The only remaining of the original Seven Wonders of the World, the Great Pyramid of Giza was said to have been built by the Pharaoh Khufu back in 2500 BC. The Great Pyramid of Giza sits at a height of 481 feet with a base of 754 feet and was built with over 2 million blocks of stone, with the average weight of these stones being between 2.5 and, and 15 tons and some of the heaviest stones weighing between 30 and 70 tons, was then encased with another 144,000 casing stones, with the average weight of these being between 15 and 20 tons. They were all highly polished, flattened to within an accuracy of 1 one hundredth of an inch, and all six sides of of these blocks were cut at perfect right angles. Now, I can throw numerous other facts about the preciseness of this monument. However, I wanted to give you these measurements and these weights of these stones because when you look at the tools that were available or said to be available during this time, the facts are it's impossible to be done and here are the facts. The stones that were used to build the Great Pyramid of Giza were limestone and red granite. The hardest tool that was said to be used by the ancient Egyptians was copper. Geologists used the Mohs hardness scale to determine the hardness of stones and metals. Copper rates a 3, limestone rates a 4, so it's far-fetched but I'll give you that one that this copper chisel could cut this limestone this precisely. But when it comes to red granite, that ranks a 7. You want to see what we use to cut red granite today? Diamond tipped buzz saws. That's the only thing strong enough to cut through this red granite. They had copper, so this alone makes the building of this monument with the technology they said that was available impossible. But that's just my thought. Recently discovered within the Queen's Chamber were traces of zinc and hydrochloric acid or hydrated zinc. Traces were also found within the northern shaft. Found in the southern shaft were traces of dilute hydrochloric acid and these traces were also found on the walls of the Queen's Chamber. Now, when you mix these two chemicals together in a chamber such as the Queen's Chamber, you get a chemical reaction with the end result being hydrogen, which triggers combustion. Now, what happens after that, I leave that up for you to decide. However, it doesn't change the fact that we see traces of chemicals that when mixed together trigger hydrogen and combustion. So you have to ask yourself, why would a chemical reaction be taking place in a monument that's said to be a tomb for a pharaoh? And going into that it being a tomb for a pharaoh, let's look at that from a logical standpoint. There is not a single hieroglyph in the entirety of this said to be tomb. There's no treasure, there's no sarcophagus, there is nothing that would give evidence to make one believe this was a tomb. Let's look at the Valley of the Kings and all of their tombs. It is wall-to-wall -wall hieroglyphs and prayers and everything you could possibly need for the afterlife. You're telling me the great Pharaoh Khufu, he got nothing? It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, it just goes to show that the Great Pyramid of Giza, it might not be what you think it is. And with these recent discoveries and the fact that you can't build shit like this with the tools available, maybe, just maybe, a technology existed back then that just doesn't exist now. But again, these are just my thoughts, just my opinions. What do you guys think about the Great Pyramid of Giza and how it was built and what it could have possibly been built for? That's going to do it for me on this one, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time, coming over, watching my video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, well, I mean, you guys know the drill. The like button, the subscribe button. Head over to my channel by clicking the icon that's somewhere over there. Checking out the videos that are, I don't know, somewhere over there. You guys have been on YouTube. You know what to do. Help me grow this thing. As always, guys, thank you so much. My name is Corey James. See you on the next one.